So last week we were talking, we introduced the complex number system. And I told you like the most important pieces of information that you would learn would be that, whew, sorry, head was upside down, that I squared equaled negative one and that I itself would equal the square root of negative one. And today we're going to take that a little bit further, but these are still really the most important pieces of information that you have when we're talking about complex numbers, right? Um, what we're going to talk about today is operations on complex numbers. And when we're talking about operations in math, it always pretty much means the same thing, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. We might throw in square roots and stuff like that, but for the most part, it's those four major operations that we do on any kind of number. Um, and I can tell you a lot about um, complex numbers. Um, real numbers are part of the complex number system, right? If we have this box, Let's see if I can make a decent box, right? Ooh, nice. That we call the complex number system, right? We'll just call it C like that. So we would have our regular complex numbers, which are anything of the form like A plus BI, where we have that little imaginary. And then we would have like a little box that had our pure imaginaries, right? Pure imaginary. And that's what we were mostly working with the other day, where it was just like little bits of I or something times I. And then over here inside, we'd have this other box. Well, that didn't work very well, did it? Let's see if we can undo that. We would have this other box on the inside. Right. And in this box, as part of the complementary number system, is you get the picture it's supposed to be inside there, is the real number system, right? And that would hold in it like the natural numbers, right? Which is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the counting numbers. Then in there, we'd have the whole numbers, which is the same thing as the natural numbers, only you start from zero instead of one. And then we would have the integers, which for some reason we label them Z because we use I for imaginary probably, um, which are your positive and negative numbers. And then you would have your rational numbers, which is like any number that you could write in the form of a, a fraction, right? We call that Q, probably for quotient would be my guess because fractions are just division problems. But we can't call it R because we use R for the real numbers. And then we have our irrational numbers like pi, right? What we call I. But if you notice, they're all part of the same system. They're all part of the complex number system. I'm not going to ask you to memorize any of that, but I just wanted you to kind of understand how they are organized and classified in terms of the numbers that you're used to dealing with and, um, and, and the numbers that you are seeing now. Now, I am going to clear this because apparently I put it on top of a whiteboard I'd already used. Um, and we are just gonna start talking about those operations. Now again, remember, two most important pieces of information you have. One is that I squared equals negative one, and the other is that I equals the square root of negative one, right? Those will still be the most important things that you need to remember when you're doing these operations. We're gonna start with what we always start with, which is addition and subtraction of complex numbers. So if I'm adding or subtracting, subtracting, I'm gonna move me over to the other side here so that I'm not in the way of the stuff that we're doing. I should just move me off the screen. I hate seeing me on here. So when I'm adding and subtracting complex numbers, 
For example, if I have the quantity 11 plus 3i plus 9 plus 2i, when we add complex numbers, the parentheses really don't mean much. If everything is just being added, we could pretty much take everything out of the parentheses, right? Plus 3i, plus 9, plus 2i. And then we can just treat our i as like it was any other variable, like it was an x. And we could combine our like terms. So in this instance, we can look at it and we go, well, negative 11 and 9, they don't have any variables on them. So we can just put those together. And that's, so I've got minus 11 plus 9. Well, that's just negative. Two. And then I have my i terms. I have 3i plus 2i. Well, that's just going to be plus 5i. So really, when you're adding these, you're just combining your like terms. Right? We can look at another example. Um, we could go 4 plus i plus 7 minus 5i. We're just going to do whatever operations we see straight across the board. It's the same as saying 4 plus i plus 7 minus 5i. And we can do those operations. And we would get 4 plus 7 is 11. And then we have i minus 5i. Well, that would be minus 4i. And what I want you to pay particular attention to is when we are dealing with the complex number system. Right, say we have this minus two plus five i. Minus two is the real part. Right? Five i is the imaginary part. Right? It's our pure imaginary number. We always write it in terms of the real. So we would have our minus 2 plus 5i. We always write the real part and then the imaginary part. If you do it otherwise in your homework, because your homework is going to be on delta math, it will come up wrong. So you want to make sure that you input it as real then imaginary. Um, So we did some addition, and addition is really easy, and subtraction just asks one more step of you. So when we're subtracting, what we have to remember is to carry things through. So if I have, for example, seven minus two i minus two plus six i what makes this a subtraction problem isn't what's happening inside here it's what's happening between these two combinations of numbers right and before when we were adding we could just take everything out of the parentheses and we can't do that with subtraction. Here, I can take this part out because there's nothing in front of it. And I can go, well, we've got seven minus two i. But here I have to distribute this negative to each piece. So this would be minus two. And then I would have to distribute it again to here. And this minus would apply to the six i as well. And it would be minus six i. And then you can go ahead and solve it in terms of of like terms, right? We have the seven minus two, which is five. And then we have minus two i minus six i. Well, that's just minus eight i. And this would be your solution. I better make a good dot on top of that i, right? So that we can tell it's not the number one. So Subtraction is really where people get screwed up, and it's because they always forget to carry that negative over into the next 
piece, right? To distribute it through. So we'll do one more. If I have 6i minus 14 minus 14 minus i uh, plus 5 minus 3i. We're going to look at that in terms of how do we take it out of the parentheses. Our 6i has got nothing happening to it. It's just going to stay the same. But this negative now, our minus sign, is in front of this one, which means it has to distribute to each piece. So this becomes minus 14, and this becomes, we have a minus times a minus, that becomes a plus i. Now this has a plus in front of it, so this will just remain the same. Everything in this quantity will remain just as it is, five minus three i. And then we can combine our like terms. Remember, we want to start with our real numbers first. So we're going to go right here with the minus 14 plus 5. And we are going to get ourselves a negative 9. Then we are going to take our 6i plus i, well, that's 7i, minus 3i gives us plus 4i. So pay particular attention to what you're doing with these addition and subtraction problems. They can get a little crazy. The addition, super easy, right? You just add your like terms. But when we start doing subtraction, you, you need to remember to distribute those negatives that are on the outside of the parentheses to each part on the inside. Priorities, I needed some coffee. And that's all there really is to adding and subtracting complex numbers. The next piece we're going to get into is multiplying. Multiplying. Now, multiplying, not super difficult, but the main thing that you need to remember is that little piece of information that I said was going to be the most important thing you knew. One is that i squared equals negative 1, and the other is that i equals the square root of negative 1. Really, when we're multiplying, this top part is going to come in really handy for us. So when we're multiplying, say we have um, 2i times... 8 minus 3i. And as you remember, when we're multiplying anything in algebra, we have to use distribution, right? So I would take this 2i and I'd multiply it times each piece, and I would get 2i equals 16i, right? And then I'd multiply it times this piece, and I'd go, well, 2i times negative 3i is going to give me negative 6i squared. Just like when we multiply x times x, we get x squared. If I multiply i times i, I get i squared. And if we look up here, we know that i squared, right, just equals negative 1. So when we go to simplify this, we have our 16i. And then we have minus 6i squared, and that is the same as saying minus 6 times negative 1, right? And what we notice with this is all it will do is change the sign in front of that 6, and it will become 16i plus 6. And our i components will disappear, right? Negative 6 times negative 1 just equals positive 6. The one thing we need to remember, though, is that when we write these, we have to write them in terms of the real number first. And this one has an i component, and this one is our real number. So it would be 6 plus 6i. So this is all about order when we're dealing with multiplication. All right, let's look at another example. If I have 
negative i times negative 2 plus 10i. We're going to do the same thing, right? We're going to distribute each piece through. I'm going to go negative i times negative 2. Well, that's just positive 2i. And then I'm going to go negative i times 10i. That's going to be negative 10i squared. And the one thing that we remember is that that is the same as saying negative 10 times negative 1, because i squared just equals negative 1. And so all it's going to do is change the sign in front of the 10, and we'll have 2i plus 10. And then we just have to write it in the proper order. When you enter it into Delta Math, make sure you enter it in, in the proper order, right? 10, I, 10 plus 2i. And that is all well and good, but we're not always going to get just one thing on the outside, right? Sometimes we are going to get other pieces, right? We're going to get, say, 7 plus i times 4 minus i. Now, this is going to work just like any time we've ever multiplied binomials. Like when you do it in Algebra 1 and when we were doing it earlier this year, it's still going to work the same way. We're still going to do distribution. We're going to take the first part. You might remember it as FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. I always think of it in terms of I'm going to take the first piece in this one and I'm going to multiply it times each piece in the other one. And we've got 7 times 4 is 28. And then I'm going to multiply 7 times my other piece in here, which is negative i, and I get negative 7i. And then once I've multiplied this first part times each part in here, I'm going to start on whatever the next number is or term. And in this case, it's i. So I'm going to go i times 4. Well, i times 4 just equals 4i. And then I'm going to go i times negative i. Well, that's just negative i squared. And now we just have to simplify this. Here's what we know so far. We know that 28 doesn't combine with anything right now, right? Minus 7i plus 4i is just negative 3i. What I know is that i squared just equals negative 1. And if I multiply that times a negative, the negative that's in front of it, it's just going to be like saying plus 1. And now I have to combine these two numbers because they are like terms. So I'm going to have 28 plus 1, which is 29, minus 3i. So take your time with these. They aren't difficult, but they will trip you up if you aren't paying attention. Right? The math itself is super simple math, but, you know, there is a way to screw it up. So let's look at 2 minus 4i times negative 5 minus 3i. When we go at this, we are going to look at it in the same terms, right? We're going to go, I'm going to take this 2. I'm going to multiply it by each piece in here. So if 2 times negative 5 equals negative 10. And then I'm going to go 2 times negative 3i. Well, that's negative 6i. And I've multiplied this 2 times everything over here. So now I'm going to move on to the negative 4i. And I'm going to go negative 4i times negative 5. Well, that's plus 20i. And then I'm going to go negative 4i times negative 3i. And that's going to be plus 12i squared, right? And so if I try and combine these, let's look at what we've got here so far. We've got, we've got negative 10. doesn't combine. There's nothing else that looks like it right now. So it's going to stay the same. I'm minus 6i plus 20i. Well, 20 minus 6 is just 14i. And here we have plus 
12 I squared. Well, that's just like saying 12 times negative one, which in the long run is just going to give me negative 12. So here I have plus 14 I minus 12. And now I can look at my like terms. I'm going to deal with my real numbers first. I have minus 10 here, right? I have minus 10 here and minus 12 here. So I'm going to put those together and I'm going to get negative 22. And my I does not combine with anything. There's nothing else with an I term. So it's just going to stay the same, plus 14I. So remember, you're kind of treating it like a variable unless you get one squared and then you know it's just going to change the sign of whatever number is before it. And they can put more and more of these together. Now, the last bit that we have to talk about is dividing complex numbers. And dividing complex numbers tends to be the most difficult part of dealing with dividing of, of dealing with complex numbers. And the reason that it's the most difficult is just like with rational numbers, when we were dealing with um, radicals, you can't have an imaginary number, complex uh, numbers. I was saying rational and I started writing national. Doesn't matter. And the way that we handle that is we do something called finding the complex conjugate. And I'm going to show you how that works. Um, when we start with dividing complex numbers, if we're just dividing pure imaginary numbers, not such a big deal, right? We can go, okay, well, here I have, say, 10 over 2i. And as long as there's nothing added or subtracted to it, all I have to do to get rid of this i in the denominator that I can't have is multiply times i over i. And the reason I choose i over i is that it's like multiplying times one. We're not changing the value of it. Anytime we multiply anything times something over itself, if I multiply three over three, three over three is just one. Because it's like saying three divided by three. Here I would get 10 times i, well, that's just 10 i. And here I'd have 2i times i. Well, that's 2i squared. And because we know that i squared just equals negative 1, it's like saying 10i over... Whew, sometimes I like when it does funny things. Negative 2, right? All it's going to do is change this sign. Now, as someone with a degree in mathematics, I cannot in good conscience ever allow two even numbers to stay over each other without uh, uh, simplifying that fraction. So I am going to take that 10 and divide by negative 2, and I get negative 5i. Let's look at another example with just the pure imaginary number. What if I have 4 over negative 9i? In this circumstance, right, I can do the same thing. I can just multiply i over i, and I would get 4i over negative 9i squared. And all that i squared is going to do is change the sign here because it's like multiplying times negative 1, and I would get 4i over 9, right? So when we're dealing with these, they're not super complicated, but they get more and more complicated when we are no longer dealing with just a pure imaginary number on the bottom. So if I have um, – let's get a new example. We'll go – negative 2 over 5 minus i. And it might not be written in a parentheses when you first see it, but you're going to want to put it in a parentheses. When we get something like this, we need to multiply by what we call the complex conjugate. 
in a complex conjugate, is simply if I have 5 minus i, I want to multiply times 5 plus i, right? What always will change will be the sign right here in the center, right? If I have a plus bi, I want to multiply times a minus bi. Because what it will do is it will get rid of anything imaginary in the denominator. So if we look at this, if I go, okay, well, I'm going to multiply this times 5 plus i, because that's the opposite of what I have on the bottom, right? I have to do it times 5 plus i, sorry, plus i, over 5 plus i, because again, when we do that, it is the same as multiplying by 1. It's the same as saying 3 over 3. And we're going to distribute. We're going to take this piece and we're going to go, okay, negative 2 times 5. Well, that's just negative 10, right? We're talking about the numerator right now. And we're going to go with negative 2 times i. Well, that's just minus 2i. And now we have to deal with this crazy denominator, right? But it's all going to work the same. We'll go 5 times 5. Well, that's just 25. And then I'll go 5 times positive i. Well, that's plus 5i. Here's why it'll work for us. I'll go negative 1 times 5 is going to give me minus 5i. Look at that. Those middle pieces are going to disappear when we add them together. Then I'm going to have negative i times i. Well, that's just minus i squared. So when we simplify this, our top will stay the same, right? There's nothing to put together. So our top will stay the same. So I'll have on in my numerator, numerator negative 10 minus 2i. This bottom piece, though, these are going to disappear, right? I have 5i minus 5i, and they just kind of eliminate, right? If we look at this, though, this is negative i squared. And what we know is that i squared is just negative 1 which is just going to give me plus 1. So 25 plus 1 is 26. Again, reduce your fraction. Everything on this is divisible by 2. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. Negative 2 divided by 2 is just negative i. 26 divided by 2 is 13. So it's all in the way that we, we look at it to interpret these. I will do one more problem just so that you can um, make sure and see it. I'll do one that's kind of compl complex so that you can uh, get a good feel for a more complicated one and have an example of that. So if I have 7 plus 3i times, I'm oh, sorry, not times, divided by... 2 plus i. When we go to solve this, what we're going to want to do is we're going to take this 2 plus i, right? And our, we're going to multiply times the conjugate of that, our denominator. So we are going to multiply this times 2 minus i over 2 minus i. And when we do it going in this direction, that would be 7 times 2. Well, that's just 14. And then we'd have 7 times negative i. Well, that's negative 7i. And we finished with the 7, so we're going to move on to the 3i. And we're going to go 3 times 2. Well, that's plus 6i. And then we will have 3i times negative i. And that's going to be minus 3i squared. I don't even want to look at that again right now until I've multiplied out this bottom piece. Same thing, 2 times 2. Well, that's just 4. 2 times negative i, that's negative 2i. Then we're going to go i times 2. Well, that's plus 2i. And we can see those center pieces starting to drop out. Then we have i times negative i gives me negative i 
squared. And now we can start to simplify top and bottom in this case, right? Let's look at it. What do we know that this i right here is? We know that it's negative 1. What do I know that this i right here is? We know it's negative 1. So if I rewrite this in those terms, I would have 14 minus 7i plus 6i, negative 3 times negative 1 is just plus 3 over, well, let's look at this, 4 minus 2i plus 2i minus times minus 1 just gives me plus 1. So now all I have to do is combine my like terms for my solution, right? I have 14 plus 3, well, that's 17. I have minus 6i plus 3i, well, that's just minus 1i. On the bottom, 4 plus 1, that would be 5. 2i, negative 2i plus 2i, those are just zero. So this is my actual solution. There's nothing to reduce. I have a 17 and a 5. Those are prime numbers. We can't reduce them any more than that. Um, so that is all the examples I'm going to give for you right now. Uh, maybe I'll give you a few more in class, but I think this video is long enough considering all we did was add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Um, you'll have a Delta math assignment that's, that's assigned with this. Um, let me know if you have any questions, and I hope you all got it. Thanks.